What year was the last person tried and convicted of the Witchcraft Act of 1735? Was it 1736? No, Susan says no. Was it 1760? No. Was it 1850? Surely it couldn't have been after that, could it, Suze? What? Susan says it was 1944. Helen Duncan is a medium. She claims that she can communicate with the dead and she charges people for it. Nowadays we see people on TV claiming to be mediums and they stand up in front of a studio audience going, I think the name begins with an A or a B or a C or a D. Anyone? A D? No, not even Dad. It's like a ghost spelling bee. It's rubbish. Because back in the 1920s and 1930s, it was a lot more show than tell. Helen Duncan, in her seances, could produce ectoplasm. She'd come back from behind a velvet curtain. There'd be a red light on her and all of these things would materialise. You'd actually see ghosts' faces. It was meant to be really convincing. But not everyone is convinced, namely the very photogenic Mr Harry Price. Harry Price was sceptical and offered Duncan money to perform seances under controlled conditions. First he got her to do her tricks as she normally would, and he collected samples of the ectoplasm that magically appeared. The ectoplasm was made up of tissue paper, cheesecloth, and yes, that is cloth that you wrap cheese in, I know, where's it been all my life, and egg white. So not exactly ghostly. And uh, ooh, they also took some photographs. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of you are wondering how anybody could have been convinced by this, but remember, this is flash photography. This would have been taken in a darkened room, sudden flash of light, you get a still frame of it. It's gonna be a lot more convincing if everything's moving around it, you can only half see it. Also remember that people who go to seances generally are there to be fooled. They kind of want to be fooled. If you've lost somebody and you want to speak to them, you don't want to confront evidence which suggests you can't. Also, how do you know this isn't what the afterlife looks like? How do you know that heaven isn't full of people like that? Paper mache heaven. Why not? You can't prove it. And Harry couldn't prove how she was actually doing it. Harry couldn't work out how she was making the ectoplasm appear. Thinking she might be hiding it in her clothes, he got her to change into a simple black dress. Yet she could still do the tricks. He then got her consent to do a full cavity search. Now that's a big deal. They checked everywhere. Yes there, and yes there. There was only one place that they couldn't search. Her stomach. She was regurgitating the yards of cheesecloth. Though it was hard to prove it. Harry thought he'd x-ray her so he could see the cheesecloth in her stomach. But when she saw the x-ray machine, she had a panic attack and still clad in her black muumuu, she ran out into the street. This obviously meant that she could dispose of the evidence while she was out in the street because she could regurgitate up all the cheesecloth and ectoplasm, right, hand it to her husband and then walk back in and go, all right, it's okay, I've, I'm over my panic attack. That's right, I'm over it, you can search me now. And, um, which is what she did, yeah. And when Harry asked to search her husband, he was like, no, no, you can't. And this is a Scottish accent, and go away. I'm proud of myself right now, I really am. Harry was not happy, though. He described the entire situation thusly. Could anything be more infantile than grown-up men wasting time, money and energy on the antics of a fat female crook? Price loves to point out how fat she is. She goes on about her being like fat, 17 stone. Hey, she couldn't have been that fat, Harry. Okay, couldn't have been that fat. How do I know? She was a medium. Boom. Uh, but he does release his report and his report's backed up not only by the evidence in the lab, but also evidence of witnesses. He gets one of her maids to talk about how she washes the ectoplasm, which is a job slightly more revolting than, um, regurgitating it. But people still believe Helen, which goes to show evidence isn't that big a deal when you're trying to convince true believers. But hey ho, it wasn't until 1941 that Helen got herself in real trouble. At a seance in a naval town called Portsmouth, she told everyone that the HMS Barnum, 
a Royal Navy Queen Elizabeth class battleship had been sunk by the Nazis. The problem was this was a military secret and the military is a bit like Fight Club. You do not talk about military secrets. Yes, the families had been told and there's nothing really stopping them other than a really lovely polite letter from Her Majesty's government to not tell anybody else. And there's nothing really stopping them from telling anything else. And there's nothing stopping, which presumably how Helen found out unless she actually spoke to a ghost which is obviously what she could have done. The Navy started to follow her, and in 1944, halfway through a seance, she was arrested by two seamen. Grow up. She was initially arrested under the Vagrancy Act of 1824, but because the authorities wanted to bump up the charge a bit, they tried her under the Witchcraft Act of 1735. Make it a more serious sentence, you see? Clever authorities. And here is the rub. The Witchcraft Act of 1735 wasn't about trying witches at all. It was about covering fraudulent spiritual activity. 1735 England was a time of the Enlightenment, of rationality. The idea that someone would charge money and pretend to talk to dead people was taken seriously. Seriously enough to be made a crime. Um, it's weird though, isn't it? Because you say it's a witch trial, but actually if she'd been proven to be a witch, she'd have gotten off. Hmm. That is backwards. That is proper backwards. When convicted, she cried out, I have done nothing! Is there no God? Which, as a medium, she should know, really, shouldn't she? Hmm. 